guys, so I have a very exciting video to film for you today. Uh, as you may be able to tell from the camera setup, this is going to be another one of my live uh, finger and brush swatch videos. Uh, so this will be with the new Nomad Cosmetics Americas Parks palette. Uh, Nomad Cosmetics is an indie brand and the products that they put out are always inspired by uh, different travel locations. So uh, as you can see, this is the national park. So it's going to be a variety of uh, different national parks in the United States. And I thought it was especially fitting that they came out with this palette uh, during the month of June because June has been designated as the National Great Outdoors Month. And I wouldn't say this is exactly a rainbow palette, but it definitely has a lot of uh, different colors in it. So if you were looking for kind of a rainbow palette to celebrate pride as well, uh, then you might be interested in this palette uh, also. So this video will be kind of like the video I filmed using the Ciate I Am Woman palette in that uh, I will be swatching the shades for you, but I'm also going to be giving you uh, some trivia and background on the different locations and national parks that they used. And I thought this was especially important because I just saw an article where uh, it says most Americans don't know where the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls are. So uh, I thought it would be great to kind of show you uh, where all these parks are located, what's special about them, and to give you my thoughts on the inspiration behind those shades and uh, whether I think uh, Nomad did a good job kind of capturing the spirit of those parks. So just a little bit about the palette itself. This retails for $39 on the Nomad Cosmetics website. Uh, they do offer free US shipping over $45, which is a little frustrating uh, that the price point of the palette is just below that. So you have to add something uh, in addition to the palette to get free shipping. Uh, they do offer free returns, however. Uh, and because they had the free shipping at $45, I did pick up this Nomad Stockholm Midnight Sun highlighter uh, that I think was on sale for $12. And as you can see, it is a cruelty-free and vegan brand. Uh, so I'll quickly show you this highlighter because I have it. I did get the uh, Balmoral Sun highlighter in an Ipsy bag uh, not too long ago. Uh, so I had some idea of what the quality was like uh, based on that. And because I know that Ipsy partners with uh, Nomad from time to time, if you're interested in this palette but you're not eager to get it, then uh, maybe just keep your eyes peeled for uh, this popping up in maybe a future Ipsy bag or their flash sales or something like that. Ipsy also sometimes has specific discount codes for their partner brands. I think I was able to get $5 off my order by signing up for their emails, uh, so that is a good option as well. Uh, but anyway, this is the... Stockholm highlighter and it's just kind of your basic cardboard packaging. It has some nice gold foil on it. It does seem a little bulky. You get 10 grams of product uh, or 0.35 ounces. Uh, so I think I would have preferred a less bulky package. You can see that there's quite a lip in there. It's almost reminiscent of the Benefit packaging, although not quite as bad. Uh, so that would be kind of my one critique. But that is the highlighter swatched. I did also pay for expedited shipping, which in retrospect, I probably could have skipped on the highlighter, uh, but I think I paid $8 uh, for expedited shipping. Uh, so just a quick word on how this was shipped. Because I paid for expedited shipping, it just had like a, a flat rate kind of USPS plastic bag. Uh, and then on the inside, it had a bubble mailer that had the Nomad cosmetic sticker. I think if you just get free shipping, your shipping label would be on this bag itself. And then on the inside, uh, the palette was wrapped inside this uh, paper with a cute little bear stamp and then uh, this stamp that looks like it was a little <laughs> a little wonky there but anyway it, it just had this kind of brown paper wrapped around the outside and then they did include some freebies here uh, I guess they always do this with their orders I haven't ordered from them directly but I, I love that they really lean into that travel theme by sending you like this little kind of postcard style uh, so it's uh, from Nomad. It says, thank you so much for your order. We hope you'll love your new Nomad goodies. Enjoy. And then 
I think that's like a little handwritten note. Thanks so much. Enjoy parks and Stockholm. So it says exactly what I ordered and then my general location. Uh, and then down here it has, I think, different locations that they have found inspiration in. So America's Parks is the newest one. And then it says California, Cartagena, Iceland, Italy, Marrakesh, New York, Sydney, and Tokyo. So that is it for the postcard, which I will definitely keep. And then they also put in a little sticker, which is very cute. It says America's Parks, has the little Nomad Cosmetics uh, logo on the side there, and it says Wandering Never Lost on the back. Okay, so just a little bit about the general inspiration for this palette before we kind of get into it. Uh, so the National Park Service was formed in 1916. It's a federal agency under the Department of the Interior that manages all national parks, many national monuments, and other conservation and historical properties. The agency is charged with a dual role of preserving the ecological and historical integrity of the places entrusted to its management, while also making them available and accessible for public use and enjoyment. And in 2018, the NPS uh, employed approximately 12,000 employees who oversaw 423 units, of which 63 were designated national parks. Uh, so as I said, the inspiration for this is the national parks, and they always say that their products are designed on location. Uh, so this one in particular is designed on location, road tripping across the USA. And Nomad says, welcome to the magnificent national parks. Rich and bountiful 15 eyeshadows formulated with extra fine pigments for majestic color payoff. Seven gleaming shimmers, six blooming mattes, and two shifting metallics, all inspired by the lands of America the Beautiful. Infused with jojoba oil for smooth and long wearing color. Cruelty free and vegan, and this is 100% plastic free. And each shadow is 1.5 grams or 0 0.05 ounces, and there are uh, 15 shadows. So it says there are 15 rich and bountiful eyeshadows in a spectrum of colors from canyon corals and redwood hues of the west to treetop greens and bare browns of the mountains and from sea to shining blue sea. And then I guess they further break down the seven shimmers into four gleaming shimmers and three shimmer swirls and then two shifting metallics. So I'll go ahead and open this. Uh, you can see they carry that kind of vintage uh, postcard design on the interior of the package, uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, it looks like this has a 12 month shelf life and it is distributed by Nomad Cosmetics out of Dallas, Texas, designed on location, road tripping across the USA and manufactured in China. <laughs> and I like the ingredients here. I don't know if that's gonna focus. Uh, the top line says made of passion for beauty, exploration, and discovery. So the palette itself, it mirrors the uh, box. I think they said this was supposed to be like a suitcase design. So uh, kind of those uh, travel stickers that you would put on a suitcase. And it just has like a little uh, piece of paper. I guess because they said it was plastic free, they're using this in lieu of like a plastic sheet and uh, it has a nice big mirror there and it says wandering never lost so i wanted to go ahead and open this so that you could see the kind of three swirled shades there uh, so they also say it's four times finer pigments for buttery soft feel and majestic color payoff a jojoba oil again for smooth and long wearing color it's PETA certified cruelty free and vegan free of parabens phthalates and mineral oil no talc and no gluten and it's 100% plastic free packaging and made of over 80% recycled cardboard. And they will also be donating to the National Parks Foundation. Uh, so it says each America's Parks palette benefits the parkland and wildlife protection efforts. The National Parks Foundation is the official charity of America's National Parks. Uh, it works to protect wildlife and parklands, ensures the health and vibrancy of biologically diverse park environments, and connects people everywhere to the wonder of parks. Uh, just reading a little bit more on the back here. It says, rich and bountiful eyeshadows formulated with extra fine pigments for majestic color payoff, infused with jojoba oil for smooth and long wearing color. Uh, and then it has all the different shades inspired by the lands of America the Beautiful. Uh, the destination is National Parks USA. The coordinates are on the road again. 
and the inspiration is America the Beautiful. It says, please recycle down here. I'll probably keep this box uh, because I think it's really beautiful. All right, so zooming in a little bit, uh, it says, feelings of excitement and freedom abound when road tripping across the good old US of A. And must stops on every list are the breathtaking national parks. From the peaks of Rockies to the depths of Grand Canyon, and from the shores of Acadia to the old growth forests of Olympic, these natural wonders create a sense of awe and admiration. The lands that inspired America the Beautiful are as diverse as the visitors they serve and the magnificent flora and fauna they help protect. And it says proud supporter of National Parks Foundation. I did want to mention, you can see there's a very minor kind of defect in the box there, uh, which I think is uh, echoed here on my palette. So I think that's partly because they didn't put it in a box. It was just kind of in a soft mailer. So it's not really a deal breaker, but it's just a minor blemish to note. Okay, so let's talk about what I will be using to swatch these shadows. Uh, if you have seen any of my other live brush swatch videos, then this will probably be uh, fairly familiar to you. Uh, but I have my Veramona color switch to clean my brushes in between different swatches. And then I have two brushes here from Refer. Uh, I have the number two, which is kind of like the MAC 239, just a natural hair uh, dense shader uh, for the matte shades. And then I have the Refer number 21, which I believe is currently in the concept store. Uh, I'll provide a link to that below. I'm not an affiliate with Refer. So this is what I will use for the shimmer and metallic shades. Uh, I will also be doing finger swatches, as I mentioned. And if I do need to dampen a brush, I will probably use the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist. And then I have um, the Lorac uh, Behind the Scenes Eye Primer, which I use because I have a lot of it, obviously, and uh, it's fairly easy to squeeze out uh, and apply to my arm. And they do suggest using an eye primer on their website for even more intensity and longer wear. Uh, they also suggest try layering the shades for added dimension. And uh, they suggest that you tap your brush gently to remove any excess powder uh, to avoid fallout. Okay, so let's take one more look at all the embossing before I ruin it. Uh, so you can see that there are a couple of what look like uh, the geyser embossings. One is for Old Faithful, which is a geyser. Uh, the other one is for giant redwoods, which I guess you can think of that as a tree. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to be uh, multi-purpose there, but they have two of those. This middle row, I don't think there is any embossing. Uh, they have the Nomad Cosmetics logo up here. Uh, they have two lighthouses, which um, Acadia Lighthouse would have that embossing, but not uh, the Narrows, which is like a, uh, what's the word? It's like a passage through a mountain, I guess. Uh, and then they have two kind of mountain looking um, embossings uh, and then an arch. Um, so this is the delicate arch. So I think it's probably more suited to this one, but not that one. And then finally we have a bear here for the Blue Ridge Parkway. So to me, it's kind of interesting how they chose to reuse those. I guess if you make custom embossing tools, you want to get your money's worth out of using them, but I don't think they always correspond with the shade. All right, so let's zoom back out. So I think I'll be able to do one row at a time here. Okay, so going first into Old Faithful, which they call a matte goldenrod yellow. And then taking my refer number two brush this pan in particular looks like it's a little wonky, a little crooked. Uh, so. I think that applied fairly well. Okay, so I will tell you a little bit about each park uh, in turn, and I'll try to insert some pictures somehow, either picture in picture or split screen, something like that. Uh, so Old Faithful is the name of a geyser located in Yellowstone National Park. 
uh, and a geyser if you need a refresher on your earth science. Uh, it's a hot spring in which water intermittently boils, sending a tall column of water and steam into the air. And uh, I believe that there is some kind of uh, sulfur chemical uh, in that uh, because I think they're supposed to have a sulfur smell. Uh, so I'm not sure if this color in particular is meant to uh, reflect sulfur or if it's meant to reflect uh, Yellowstone. Uh, so the National Park itself, I think the type of rock there is a little yellow, so that's where it gets its name. Uh, so Old Faithful is the world's most famous geyser. It erupts around 20 times a day, and these eruptions are predicted with a 90% confidence rate based on the duration and height of the previous eruption. So Old Faithful was named for its frequent and somewhat predictable eruptions, which number more than a million since Yellowstone became the world's first national park in 1872. And I've kind of cobbled together information from a variety of websites. I've looked at the national park site, some Wikipedia, some other news sources. Uh, but in particular, the National Parks um, website, some of the uh, taglines that they used kind of tickled me, so I included those. And the one that they used for Yellowstone was uh, Land of Wonder, uh, semicolon, Preserve for All. Uh, so Yellowstone is largely in the northwest corner of Wyoming and extends into Montana and Idaho. Uh, it was established by the U.S. Congress and signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant on March 1st, 1872. Uh, and this predates the National Park Service. So uh, Yellowstone was the first national park in the U.S. and is also widely held to be the first national park in the world. Uh, and Old Faithful can vary in height from 100 to 180 feet, with an average near 130 to 140 feet. Eruptions normally last between 1.5 to 5 minutes. Scientists estimate that the amount ranges from 3,700 to 8,400 gallons, depending on the duration of the eruption. And during an eruption, the water temperature at the vent has been measured at 204 degrees Fahrenheit or 95.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, the steam temperature has been measured above 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and there is a live webcam, so if you wanted to uh, check out the uh, geyser without actually going in person, then I will provide a link for that down below. Uh, but that is it for Old Faithful. Okay, so next up we have Cuyahoga Valley, which is a shimmery yellow shade. And going in this time with my refer number 21 brush. This one is not picking up super well on the brush. All right, I'm gonna give this one a spray with the Tarte Maracuja Mist. A little better, but I would say definitely use a finger if you want the most payoff. So that is finger, dry brush, and wet brush. So Cuyahoga Valley is a shimmer bright autumn yellow. Cuyahoga Valley National Park is located in Northeast Ohio between Akron and Cleveland, and it was established in 1975. So Cuyahoga comes from um, the Mohawk word meaning crooked river. And uh, if you don't know, Mohawks are an Indian tribe here in the US. And the tagline here is a river renewed. So this park preserves 22 miles of the Cuyahoga River and the mosaic of natural and man-made features surrounding it, including lush forests, rolling hills, wetlands, waterfalls, farm fields, historic buildings, and dramatic rock ledges. Decades before this Midwestern site officially became a national park, severe pollution in the river outraged and embarrassed the country, helping to spur the creation of the Clean Water Act the Environmental Protection Agency, and Earth Day. Now the health of the river has improved significantly, and the park offers numerous recreational opportunities and even a scenic railroad for its millions of visitors each year. Uh, so initially when I saw that yellow shade, I wasn't quite sure what the inspiration was, but because they call it a bright autumn yellow, I think that's supposed to look like leaves in the autumn. 
Uh, and I did see a very pretty picture of a little like covered bridge uh, with a lot of autumn leaves. So I'm guessing that's kind of the inspiration for that yellow shade. Okay, so moving on to Everglades. And I pretty much completely destroyed the embossing, rubbing my finger in that. It wasn't one of the prettier uh, embossings, but still. Uh, and this one, I think you can see that there's quite a lot of kick up in the pan, so I think this is definitely one that you would probably want to tap your brush. Okay, so the Everglades, uh, the shade they describe it as a matte swamp greenery. Uh, Everglades National Park um, is located in South Florida, like very, very South Florida, uh, and it was established in 1934. It's the largest subtropical wilderness in the United States and the largest wilderness of any kind east of the Mississippi River. Uh, there's 1.5 million acres of wetland and it's the third largest national park in the contiguous U.S., so not including uh, Hawaii and Alaska, uh, after Death Valley and Yellowstone. So Everglades National Park protects an unparalleled landscape that provides important habitat for numerous rare and endangered species like the manatee, American crocodile, and the elusive Florida panther. In 1934, Everglades became the first national park created to protect a fragile ecosystem as major canal building projects took place across South Florida. Okay, so next up going into Acadia Lighthouse, which is a very pretty shimmery blue shade. And then going in again with my rougher number 21 brush. So that is a dry brush. I'd say there's a bit of kind of fallout and uh, you do get much better payoff with the finger swatch. So again, using some of the Tarte Mist. I think maybe you get a tiny bit better payoff with the wet brush, but not by much. Okay, so Acadia Lighthouse, uh, they describe this as a shimmer sea blue. So I don't think this refers to a specific lighthouse. Acadia National Park is on the mid section of the main coast. Uh, it was established in 1929. Uh, prior to that, in 1919, it was established as the Lafayette National Park uh, and the National Park Service calls it the crown jewel of the North Atlantic coast. So I think the name comes from uh, French settlers in the, oh gosh, 17th, 18th centuries in that area of the US and what is now Canada. Uh, so Acadia National Park protects the natural beauty of the highest rocky headlands along the Atlantic coastline of the United States. Uh, there's an abundance of habitats and a rich cultural heritage. At 3.5 million visits a year, it's one of the top 10 most visited national parks in the United States. Visitors enjoy 27 miles of historic motor roads, 158 miles of hiking trails, and 45 miles of carriage roads. So as I mentioned, I don't think there is a specific lighthouse this is referring to. Uh, there's the Baker Island Headlight Station, the Bass Harbor Headlight Station, and Bear Island Headlight Station that are all uh, managed by the Acadia National Park. And I learned that a headlight station incorporates kind of all the uh, buildings of the lighthouse, including like the person's house and, and that sort of thing. So, okay, so I think that is it for Acadia. And to clean my brush again, I'm just kind of rubbing it off. It does start to look a little, a little sad by the end of these videos. Okay, so going into South Rim, just like a dusty purple color. I think, yeah, you can see this definitely does give you some fallout. So go in 
with a little bit and then you can always add more. Uh, so the South Rim, they describe it as a matte sunset purple, and this refers to the Grand Canyon. So uh, Grand Canyon National Park in northwestern Arizona, so don't be one of those Americans who doesn't know where the Grand Canyon is. Uh, it's the 15th site in the U.S. to have been named as a national park. And most visitors, over 90%, see the Grand Canyon from the South Rim. Uh, and Grand Canyon National Park encompasses 277 miles, or 446 kilometers, of the Colorado River and adjacent uplands. The park is home to much of the immense Grand Canyon, which is a mile, or 1.6 kilometers deep, and up to 18 miles or 29 kilometers wide. Layered bands of colorful rock reveal millions of years of geologic history. So that's one more look at the first row before I remove the swatches. So I am using a micellar wipe here to remove these and I will reapply the eye primer. I really should be using a makeup eraser <laughs> uh, as I'm filming a video about conservation and nature and everything like that, but as I've said in previous videos, uh, if I have makeup wipes, I will use them if they come in like a gift with purchase or something like that, and then once those are gone, uh, I won't repurchase, so. I feel like once you introduce shimmer, it just kind of sticks around, so. Okay, so first up we have the shade Mammoth Cave, which now that I feel it, I think it might have had the Nomad Cosmetics embossing on it, but it's so like textured that it's a little kind of hard to see. All right, so and again using the refer number 21. And this is a dry brush. And then spraying that. I think that one uh, actually does benefit from the spray. So if you didn't want to use a finger for some reason, I think a spray definitely kind of gets you close. If you have long nails and don't want to use your finger, you can always pick up a pack of those uh, like sponge tip applicators uh, that you used to get in eyeshadow palettes and that sort of thing. Uh, I think that's the closest to an actual finger that you can use. Okay, so Mammoth Cave, they describe as a shifting metallic bronze olive. Uh, so Mammoth Cave National Park is located in west central Kentucky and it was established as a national park on July 1st, 1941. <laughs> Its tagline is, more than a cave. <laughs> It's the world's longest known cave system with more than 400 miles or 640 kilometers of surveyed passageways. It's home to thousands of years of human history and a rich diversity of plant and animal life, earning it the title of UNESCO World Heritage Site. Okay, so next up we have the Teton Range, and this is one of those uh, swirled colors. I'm not sure what the benefit is in swirling those shades rather than just having it kind of mixed. It's a very pretty color, but looking at the palette, you're not always sure what it's going to look like on your eyes. Going in with the brush. So that's a dry brush. And then dampening the brush again. Sometimes what I like to do with this type of shade is maybe use a brush to kind of get the outer like perimeter of where I want to put 
the shade down and then go back in with a finger to kind of amp up the color payoff because I think if you have smaller eyes, it can be a little bit more challenging to use a finger to kind of get in all the little nooks and crannies, but, but I think combining the two techniques will get you the placement and the payoff that you want. So again, this is finger dry wet, finger dry wet. And this brush is going to get a workout this row because I think all of them are like shimmery metallic shades. Okay, so the Teton range, they describe it as a shimmer swirl golden brown. Uh, so Grand Teton National Park is located in Wyoming. It's only 10 miles south of Yellowstone and it was established in 1929. The tagline is Mountains of the Imagination. So the park includes the major peaks of the 40 mile long or 64 kilometer Teton range, as well as most of the northern sections of the valley known as Jackson Hole, which you've probably heard of. Rising above a scene rich with extraordinary wildlife, pristine lakes, and alpine terrain, the Teton Range stands as a monument to the people who fought to protect it. These are mountains to the imagination. Mountains that led to the creation of Grand Teton National Park, where you can explore over 200 miles of trails, float the Snake River, and enjoy the serenity of this remarkable place. Okay, so going in next to the Ho Rainforest. It's going to be tight getting six more kind of swatches in this much of arm space. But anyway, uh, that is the uh, finger, that is the dry, and that is the wet. Okay, so Ho Rainforest, they call it a Shimmer Swirl Rainforest Green. Uh, so the Ho Rainforest is in Olympic National Park in Washington uh, on the Olympic Peninsula, and it was established in 1938. The Ho Rainforest earns its name from the ever-flowing Ho River that carves its way from Mount Olympus towards the Pacific Coast. However, where the name originates is up for debate. The word Ho undoubtedly comes from Native American languages, and I apologize if I'm going to butcher this, uh, possibly the culette word Ohalet, which means fast moving water or snow water. Since the river itself forms from glacial runoff, that origin seems straightforward. Other explanations state that the Kinalt, word Q, meaning boundary, could be the root of the name as a river as massive as the Ho certainly forms a formidable boundary across the landscape. A third consideration claims that the word Ho translates to man with quarreling wives. What the actual history behind the name is appears to be lost to time. So the Ho rainforest is one of the largest temperate rainforests in the U.S., and uh, with its incredible range of precipitation and elevation, diversity is the hallmark of Olympic National Park. Encompassing nearly a million acres, the park protects a vast wilderness, thousands of years of human history, and several distinctly different ecosystems, including glacier-capped mountains, old-growth temperate rainforests, and over 70 miles of wild coastline. Okay, so next up we have Mount Denali which that actually does kind of look like a mountain. Okay, so Mount Denali, it's a shimmer swirl glacier gray, and Denali National Park is located in central Alaska, and it was established in 1917. The word Denali means the high one in the native 
Athabascan language and refers to the mountain itself. Uh, Denali is 6 million acres of wild land bisected by one ribbon of road. Travelers along it see the relatively low elevation Tega forest give way to high alpine tundra and snowy mountains, culminating in North America's tallest peak, which is the 20,310 foot Denali. Wild animals, large and small, roam unfenced lands, living as they have for ages. Solitude, tranquility, and wilderness await. And their tagline is more than a mountain. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm gonna to have to go back up here to swatch the last shade, which is Big Bend. And again, I think this does have the Nomad Cosmetics uh, embossing on it. It's just a very metallic shade, so it's kind of hard to see. This is a very pretty color. Okay, so Big Bend is a shifting metallic charcoal lavender. And uh, Big Bend National Park is located in West Texas on the U.S.-Mexico border. It was established in 1944. The tagline is Splendid Isolation, colon, Big Bend. There is a place in far west Texas where night skies are dark as coal and rivers carve temple-like canyons in ancient limestone. Here, at the end of the road, hundreds of bird species take refuge in a solitary mountain range surrounded by weather-beaten desert. Tenacious cactus bloom in sublime southwestern sun, and diversity of species is the best in the country. This magical place is Big Bend. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Uh, so someone at the National Park Service really got a little poetic there. Uh, so the park has national significance as the largest protected area of Chihuahuan desert topography and ecology in the United States and was named after a large bend in the Rio Grande slash Rio Bravo. The park protects more than 1,200 species of plants, more than 450 species of birds, 56 species of reptiles, and 75 species of mammals. Additional park activities include scenic drives, programs led by Big Bend Park Rangers, and stargazing. And I'm guessing that's kind of what they were going for with these shades, is kind of like the night sky, stargazing, that sort of thing, but I'm not entirely sure what the inspiration was for that. So that is one more look at the second row. And I think those darker shades I'm having a little bit of trouble removing. Okay, so next up we have Giant Redwoods. So we're back to a matte color. Just making sure this is kind of set a little bit. So if swatches toward the end aren't maybe as ideal, uh, just keep in mind that I've done two rows, I've removed those, I've reapplied primer, uh, I'm trying to clean off brushes in between, etc. but there are limitations, I guess. So this one might be another one, kind of like that green shade, where there's a little bit more kick up. So Giant Redwoods is a matte redwood red, and I think this is named after the Redwood National and State Parks, which I think is actually like a designated term. Uh, so those are along the coast of Northern California. Uh, redwood National Park was established in 1968, and their tagline is so much more than the tallest trees. Most people know Redwood as home to the tallest trees on earth, 
but the parks also protect vast prairies, oak woodlands, wild rivers, and 40 miles of rugged coastline. People have lived in this verdant landscape since time immemorial. Together, the National Park Service and California State Parks are managing and restoring these lands for the inspiration, enjoyment, and education of all. Uh, and I did also want to mention that the polish I am wearing, uh, which is a little more fall inspired maybe, I applied the OPI Mirror Mirror on the wall, which is from, I think it was like 2013, their San Francisco collection. Uh, so Muir Woods um, is also home to Redwoods, and Muir Woods isn't a national park. I believe it's like a memorial um, named after John Muir, who we'll uh, talk about in a little bit here. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that that is what I'm wearing in case you want a national parks kind of inspired nail polish. I think in 2017, OPI did a California collection where they have a polish named after Yosemite, and they also have one named after the sequoias. Obviously those were kind of limited edition collections, but I think you should be able to find those on eBay. I just purchased the uh, Yosemite one on eBay a couple days ago. So just letting you know that in case you really want to go in on the National Parks theme. Okay, so next up we have Delicate Arch. which I would call that kind of like a metallic peach. It's not quite copper. And this actually did have the arch embossing on it. So this is the dry brush, which isn't really doing much. Ooh, you can see how that just kind of chunked off there. Yeah, I think a finger is definitely your best bet here. Okay, so Delicate Arch, they call a shimmer sandstone, which I can see. So the Delicate Arch is part of Arches National Park in Eastern Utah and the tagline is a stone icon. Uh, so people come from all over the world to visit Arches National Park and visiting delicate art is on the top of many visitors to-do lists. In a park with over 2000 stone arches, this particular freestanding arch has become a widely recognized symbol of the state of Utah and one of the most famous geologic features in the world. The light opening beneath the arch is 46 feet high and 32 feet wide, making it the largest freestanding arch in the park. It has had more than a few names in its history, from the colorful Cowboys Chaps or Old Maids Bloomers to the prosaic Salt Wash Arch. The term delicate first appeared in a January 1939 article about the Arches National Monument Scientific Expedition, which described it as the most delicately chiseled arch in the entire area. And the tagline for Arches National Park is a red rock wonderland. So visit Arches to discover a landscape of contrasting colors, landforms, and textures unlike any other in the world. The park has over 2,000 natural stone arches and hundreds of soaring pinnacles, massive rock fins, and giant balanced rocks. This red rock wonderland will amaze you with its formations, refresh you with its trails, and inspire you with its sunsets. Okay, so next up we have Blue Ridge Parkway, which I think has the only bear embossing. And I'll say off the bat that this one disappointed me a little bit in the color choice because uh, Blue Ridge Parkway is probably the closest park to me out of all of these. And I haven't been on the parkway itself, I don't think, but I've been on the Skyline Drive, which is kind of like the extension of it. And as the name would indicate, the mountains do actually look blue. So I would have loved to have seen a blue shade rather than this kind of not quite teal green. Uh, but anyway, uh, so Blue Ridge Parkway, they call it a matte treetop green. 
Uh, so Blue Ridge Parkway, it goes through North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, Congress authorized it in 1936, and it was mostly complete by 1966. And also, this is not a national park. It's a national parkway. Uh, so the tagline is America's Favorite Drive. The Blue Ridge Parkway is a national parkway and all-American road in the United States, noted for its scenic beauty. The parkway, which is America's longest linear park, runs for 469 miles or 755 kilometers through 29 Virginia and North Carolina counties, linking Shenandoah National Park to Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It runs mostly along the spine of the Blue Ridge, a major mountain chain that is part of the Appalachian Mountains. It also runs through the George Washington and Jefferson National Forests. So it starts just west of Charlottesville, which is where I went to school, and ends south of Asheville, North Carolina. The roadway continues through Shenandoah as Skyline Drive, a similar scenic road which is managed by a different National Park Service unit. So a Blue Ridge Parkway experience is unlike any other. A slow-paced and relaxing drive revealing stunning long-range vistas and close-up views of the rugged mountains and pastoral landscapes of the Appalachian Highlands. The parkway meanders for 469 miles, protecting a diversity of plants and animals and providing opportunities for enjoying all that makes this region of the country so special. And the parkway has been the most visited unit of the national park system every year since 1946, except four, which were 1949, 2013, 2016, and 2019. <laughs> I think that blue shade has kind of stained my fingers a little bit. All right, but we'll try to carry on. So going into the Narrows, which again, I think has like a light uh, house type embossing. Yeah, so that has some very interesting kind of flex of almost like a duo chromy holographic type glitter, which is really pretty. So this is the dry brush. I would say the dry brush almost did better than the wet brush. Maybe I just need to build it up a little bit more. Okay, so the Narrows, they call it a Shimmer Canyon Coral. And the Narrows are in Zion National Park, which is in southwestern Utah. And it was established in 1919. So the Narrows is the narrowest section of Zion Canyon. This gorge with walls a thousand feet tall and the river sometimes just 20 to 30 feet wide is one of the most popular areas in Zion National Park. And the tagline is Utah's first national park. And <laughs> some more uh, kind of poetic language. Follow the paths where ancient native people and pioneers walked. Gaze up at massive sandstone cliffs of cream, pink, and red that soar into a brilliant blue sky. Experience wilderness in a narrow slot canyon. Zion's unique array of plants and animals will enchant you as you absorb the rich history of the past and enjoy the excitement of present day adventures. All right, and the last shade we have here is Half Dome. Okay, so Half Dome is a matte bare brown, which it seems like a missed opportunity to use a bare embossing on that shade if that's what they were going for. So the Half Dome is in Yosemite National Park, which is in Northern California. Rising nearly 5,000 feet above Yosemite Valley and 8,800 feet above sea level, Half Dome is a Yosemite icon and a great challenge to many hikers. 
despite an 1865 report declaring that it was perfectly inaccessible, being probably the only one of the prominent points about the Yosemite, which never has been and never will be, trodden by human foot, George Anderson reached the summit in 1875, in the process laying the predecessor to today's cable route. So it says Yosemite is not just a great valley, but a shrine to human foresight, the strength of granite, the power of glaciers, the persistence of life, and the tranquility of the High Sierra. Uh, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm just thinking of all the like Mac operating systems as I read this. Uh, so first protected in 1864, Yosemite National Park is best known for its waterfalls, but within its nearly 1,200 square miles, you can find deep valleys, grand meadows, ancient giant sequoias, a vast wilderness area, and much more. So it says Yosemite was central to the development of the national park idea. Galen Clark and others lobbied to protect Yosemite Valley from development, ultimately leading to President Abraham Lincoln signing the Yosemite Grant in 1864. John Muir, who's the, I guess, naturalist I mentioned when I was talking about this polish, who uh, the monument is named after, uh, John Muir led a successful movement to have Congress establish a larger national park by 1890, one which encompassed the valley and its surrounding mountains and forests, paving the way for the national park system. And again, the national park system was founded in 1916. Uh, so Yosemite now draws about 4 million visitors each year, and most visitors spend the majority of their time in the seven square miles of Yosemite Valley. And the park set a visitation record in 2016, surpassing 5 million visitors for the first time in its history. So again, that is it for the final row. I'd say I had the most trouble with this delicate arch shade. Uh, the finger swatch of the giant redwoods wasn't super great, but I think my arm might just have been a little damp when I was watching that one. So the brush swatch looks pretty good. And I'll give you all a close up look at the aftermath of all that swatching. So I hope you guys enjoyed um, this video and, and seeing the finger and the brush swatches uh, and learning a little bit about all these magnificent places in the US along the way. Uh, when I saw this theme, I was quite excited because my husband and I uh, do dearly love to go hiking and we're much more like I guess mountain people than beach people. So this theme and this destination kind of immediately caught my attention. Uh, seeing the inside of the palette, uh, it's a little bit more colorful than I typically go for. So I definitely thought the best way for me to kind of show off this palette was to tell you a little bit more about the inspiration uh, behind these shadows. My normal eye looks tend to be a little bit more on the neutral side, but I have seen some great looks on Instagram already. Um, I saw Karen Harris already film a video with this. And yeah, I hope you found this video a welcome addition to that conversation. So please let me know um, down below if you've been to any of these places, if you plan on picking up this palette, and uh, please like and share this video. And I hope you will subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see future content like this uh, from me. So uh, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I hope you're able to kind of get out there this summer and enjoy uh, some of the natural beauty of either the US or whatever country you happen to live in. So I hope you guys are all staying very safe and healthy and I will talk to you soon. Bye.